Hello and welcome to Food for Thought Fest 2022, day two. Can we have a huge round of applause, yeah? Guys, come on, give it up. You know, yesterday was great. You know, we spoke about mental health, we spoke about gut health, we spoke about a lot of things which are important. Post-pandemic, pre-pandemic, we had a great conversation with the great panelists as well. And now it's day two. And it's going to be better. We're going to have a lot of panelists. We're going to have a lot of conversation. We're going to talk about food, entertainment, and whatnot. And let me tell you guys that, uh, you know, the food that we eat, you know, defines somebody's personality as well. And post-pandemic, the food choices of people have changed drastically. And uh, to talk on that, we have someone who has spent 23 years in the media and has had focus on wellness and lifestyle for the last 15 years. He has, seen in the, he has seen the industry evolve and has understanding of wellness given his interest in the global wellness market and his title Global Spa in India and Middle East ed editions. He also has Peak Life magazine under the umbrella of Pinnacle Connect LLP. Give a huge round of applause for Soumya Maheshwari. It's very interesting uh, to come back to nutrition and, and the post-pandemic era. And we have the wellness guru himself here. We have Ashish, the you know the best of the designs uh, that he does. We have Misha, sports personality and nutrition, and we of course have you as well. You know, uh, Monique, uh, Dr. Mehta, Ashish, uh, I would request you all please come in. Dr. Mehta first. You know, he's the global leading holistic health guru. We've seen him uh, from my growing years to today itself. You know, he's been an inspiration, and the way he has conducted himself on the ground, off the ground. Uh, he has kind of given us the mantra of Mickey-mizing everybody. We also have Vishal Anand. Vishal is an entrepreneur who has interest in, who has interest in food. And it's, it's lovely to have him here with the, with the restaurants that he does, uh, right from the rich Punjabi food to the bakeries and, and nutritious, uh, you know, this thing, the delicacies that he serves. Uh, Monique is a functional nutritional and a lifestyle consultant with over a 12-year experience. And, uh, she also looks at the holistic health, uh, the way it comes up. Misha is a, a theatre person, a former squash champion that we have, has a distinction of being India's national squash champion with consecutively five years. And Ashish, I don't really have to elaborate much on. He's a leading fashion designer. Attitude, at, he has attained a remarkable success in the global fashion world and put India onto the fashion world map in a big manner. Dr. Mehta, I, I think we'll start with you. And uh, I would like to understand the, the role of food in the human evolution, if you could elaborate a bit on that. Okay, so food is nourishment and everything that you consume nourishes you. So right from your visuals, right from your audio, your olfactory, your touch, taste, emotions, they nourish you. This open sky nourishes you with vastness, infinity. The oxygen of the tree nourishes you. The photosynthesis and thermogenesis of the sunshine nourishes you. It also gives you creativity. And of course, hydration, etc. Very mundane. Food translates into thoughts, words and deeds. One can become creative with food. One can become productive with food. One can get irritated with food. Lots of spices can irritate you as well. Because mind-gut access science talks about it. Uh, the science of neuroplasticity, epigenetics, microbiomes, microbiota. You must know that the, such food sciences were actually offered by Ayurveda to the world thousands of years back when a Rishi Munis, who were scientists, philosophers, poets all in one, could see it all, experience it all, and food is nothing but Vedas. Food literally can make you a visionary. Food can give you insights, foresights, intuitions, give you intelligence, or food can make you dumb if it is processed, preserved, colored, and camouflaged with taste. Food can make you a god, or it can make you an animal, because human consciousness is the only one which can allow you to rise above gods or fall below animals. Food can be instinctive, food can be intelligent. Choose what you want to eat to evolve the way you want to evolve. I think in Vedic science, sattvic food, sattva, gun, bhavas, gunas, 
sanskaras come from food so sattva gun is righteousness sattva gun is creativity it's jurisprudence and it's all about being in equanimity equilibrium so empathy sympathy compassion comes from food your attitude comes from food i mean what else i should leave more for the others to talk also with food you can get energized naturalized maximized optimized and with food you can get mickeyized great <laughs> Vishal, I'll, I'll, I'll come to you with this because, you know, Dr. Mehta spoke about the richness of food, the, uh, the way it can actually help you grow and the way it can actually irritate you as well. In the post-pandemic era, I mean, have you seen uh, the changing food habits of your guests in the various restaurants that you have? And if at all, then how do you actually curate your menus and, and how do you actually balance the offerings in your restaurant? You know, to me, uh Anything that you do moderately is good for you. So we don't want to be, you know, I don't want to be too conscious about what I eat on a daily basis, but what, how much I eat. And uh, so we apply that in a restaurant as well, because when you go out to eat, you just don't want to eat only healthy food. You know, you're going out to eat because you want to break away from that monotony at home where you are always doing healthy food or you're always trying to eat healthy. To me, everything, you know, you should have a wholesome meal. It's not important to just pick your food that I'm going to eat this only or eat that only. I think once a week a chole bhature is also good for me. So, and, and if I don't do that, I won't feel good from inside. So I need to do that. So similarly, I feel that anything done moderately, be it food or, or even drinks for that matter, we have, you know, all our restaurants have bars as well. So I feel just do things moderately and it's never going to harm you. The moment you get into excessive of anything, that's going to harm you. So, is there a change in the uh, There is. Uh, I would say that people have become more conscious, certainly, and what they eat. And uh, so, I think the biggest change that I see is uh, people are moving towards more, you know, uh, uh, hygiene has become the most important thing in a restaurant today, more than, more than food, uh, what they eat. But at the same time, yeah, there are some, uh, some things that people have particular food that people love. One is avocado, which has become so, you know, we, we are, uh, at most of the restaurants, we have something related to avocado. We, we are doing dishes related to, with avocado in it. Then, similarly, there are other, you know, health, healthy foods that uh, people would want. So, peop I see some focus, more focus on salads and uh, coming in. So, people who would not eat, eat salads earlier have incorporated that in their diet. So, yeah, there are certain changes, but at the same time, I don't see like, you know, uh, a huge change in what there was pre-pandemic or post-pandemic. We always want to eat good food, which is also healthy. Misha, uh, that brings me to you. You are a nutritionist. You, you also help people get their diet in a very balanced manner. And you also are from a sports background. Uh, have you seen anything coming to you to what Vishal is suggesting that, you know, it's more focus on salad? And if at all, then how are you actually addressing? Because what, what we also understand is, you know, post-pandemic, people have started to go on all out. You know, we definitely want to go out because they want to cover up for the last two years. Uh, do you tackle that with your clients? Do you, and if at all, then how do you do that? So actually, what I'm seeing a lot of post-pandemic is uh, it, it had started before. It's an industry in India wellness, right? Uh, and it's a global industry that's growing so fast. But what I'm seeing post-pandemic is how many more people are conscious about what they're eating, how they're eating, when they're eating, what the source of their food is, and basically looking at food overall in a space of how can I boost my immunity, how can I get healthier in this post-pandemic era. Uh, yes, taste, of course, is a very big part of it. Um, but more and more I'm seeing people who are wanting to make a difference to their health, who are wanting to get stronger, who are wanting to get fitter, and who are wanting to boost their immune system so that a lot of this doesn't sort of, you know, uh, have a backlash in the future. But yes, going out, you know, I think it's, it's that survival, I, I think it's called the survival paradox or the survival mechanism. When you go through something that is so stressful, at a personal level, at a global level, at a national level, when you come out of it, it's everybody wants to go out, everybody wants to eat, everybody wants to live life larger, 
than before. Um, so there is definitely that aspect, but I see health and wellness becoming a huge part of that conversation, which wasn't there as much before. Great. Uh, uh, Bonnie, I wanted to come to you, but I think I'll, I'll go to Dr. Mehta before this. Yes. Dr. Mehta, you have, uh, you, you spoke about food and how this, the, the sattvic food has kind of picked up. Uh, overall, if I go through the work profile, your professional profile that we see, you have been more into burning the calories with the jumps that you make people do with the yoga that you help them concentrate with and you know all the functional part of it you also mentioned and, and if i recall you, you want to learn parkour now yeah so all of those are the ways to burn the calorie uh, so the idea here is one you're talking about good food and two you're you're talking about burning all the excess calories so is there a balance that we need to do or, or there are a lot of people who simply say that, you know, I, I don't really work out, but I ensure that I burn those excess calories that I've had. So your, your take on that, what, what, what exactly? Uh, burning calories is a very juvenile approach to exercise. Exercise is more about integrating and harmonizing your energies within. So the polarities of yin yang, hatha, chandra surya, shiva shakti, workouts are meant to harmonize them, to trigger your endocrine response, to improve your digestion, to cleanse and flush your kidneys, to increase your liver management, to do better insulin management. So this has got nothing to do with calorie burning. I would say, you know, stop counting your steps, count, stop counting your reps, Stop counting your cal uh, calories, uh, collect good memories, don't be an accountant with your life, stop counting, start living, be intimate with your food, eat food with a lot of reverence because food comes from this earth, from farm to fork and while foods grown in farms, they experience sunlight, they experience the movement of the stars and the planets, they take the best vital water from the earth they uh, witness the ether around and the wisdom of the collective consciousness is absorbed by the food and when you eat that food, that wisdom translates into you. So I say food is, you know, responsible for human evolution, for wellness revolution. So we must move away from the occidental approach of, you know, fragmenting things and looking at things into parts. Uh, you know, intellectualizing things and look at things as whole, complete, total. Food is supposed to bring you values as a mankind to make you a god. And I mean, what is this weight loss business? It's nonsense. You shouldn't be working out to lose weight at all. You should be working to harmonizing your energies, improving your uh, organic functions and systems and bringing them in orchestration under one roof of your mind. And mindfulness is the biggest sham I've heard. It has to be mindlessness. Because empty your mind and mind the emptiness is what Zen all about, Dhyan about. It's emptying. Fasting is very good because that is also about emptying. I mean, we can talk volumes, but allow others to talk to. Great, of course. Uh, Monique, I would come to you. You, know, you, you have uh, been in the industry and you're helping people with the nagging health issues, you know, optimization of energy and all that stuff. Yeah. My question to you would be, uh, and, and taking from the fact that, you know, there is a 10,000 steps fat that's come in, that, some, that you have to do a 10,000 step every day, that's how you count your steps. Yeah. At times it is possible for people, at times it is not really possible, but they push themselves and they're not really kind to their body. So what are your suggestions for one to be kind to their body and, and address all the health issues that they're kind of focusing on? I actually really like that you've brought up this concept of kindness to the body. Um, I think it's the thing that's lacking most. Um, and when I think of kindness, I think of self-love and self-care, but also self-knowledge. Um, and I think when, when you're talking about being kind to your body, it also means really understanding what it is that you need at any point in time in order to feel your best, right? Um, and just like what you're saying, that could mean taking rest. It could mean going for 20,000 steps. It could mean eating um, 
you know, drinking a smoothie for breakfast or having a really wholesome, nourishing, you know, eggs and bacon or whatever it is that makes you and your body feel good at that point in time. So I'll just also take the opportunity to sort of explain my approach to understanding what it is that you or your body needs. And it's, it's basically five steps. I've written about it in my book that's coming out in uh, January. And those steps are really, first of all, you need a motivation. We were speaking about um, the pandemic and how it gave people a motivation to take charge of their health, right? The pandemic is more or less behind us. So I think it's important for people to try to tap into that why, that you know, question as to what is your motivation for doing the things that you need to do in order to feel better. Then the second thing is, and I think Dr. Mehta sort of spoke about that a little bit already, it's starting your day right every single day, getting into a mindset of uh, mindlessness, as Dr. Mehta said, I, I still call it mindfulness, but sort of getting in touch you know, with something that's higher than yourself, grounding, connecting with your body, being exposed to sunlight, um, being, having some sort of movement uh, in your day as well. So these are the three aspects that sort of make up, I call it powering up your day, uh, a kind of thing. And then this, the third step is to actually look and see what is muddying up the waters. So when you see a pool and you throw sand in it, you can't see the bottom. Right, so it's like that with our diet and our lifestyle. We often are doing things that are muddying up the waters, that are keeping us from feeling our, our best. And these are very often very foundational things. So you need to look, take a good look at that and see, I mean, am I eating inflammatory foods? Am I eating foods that are not right for me? Um, am I getting enough sleep? Am I, getting, am I managing my stress? So very foundational factors. The number four is to actually get personal and to try to identify what is unique to your body because we're all different. And that may involve a process of investigation. So tracking to see what, you know, uh, what you're eating and how it makes you feel. Uh, it could be um, looking at your health history, looking at your family history, looking at your genetics, just taking a more personal approach to your, um, your diet and lifestyle habits. And then last and not least is, you know, what has become very popular, which is biohacking, which is taking it to the next level. It could be doing blood glucose monitoring, uh, microbiome mapping. I mean, the things that help you fine tune your approach. And that really at the end of the day is the five steps to finding out what works best for your body. Good, thank you. That, that, that makes it very interesting. Ashish, I'll come to you. Now, you know, uh, a wise man once said that, food is the outfit that you wear every day. How would you elaborate on that? Uh, well, uh, I'm personally actually uh, a big foodie. And uh, I mean, I'm not as knowledgeable as all the other panelists here on food. But uh, if I have to talk about from what you're asking, uh, the, if, you know, the, it's just the fallacy that people in the fashion industry don't eat. I think, uh, you know, all the, all the fit models and everyone that you see are there's, we all have a very strong love affair with food, so some of some of them actually eat more than all of us. So it's not it's just it's just something that you guys think oh oh she's so fit she's she's not eating at all. So that's not true. Uh, in terms of uh, I think uh, on a personal level, in terms of when you said how do what do I think of food, I think it's um, it's I would tend to agree with what uh, Vishal talked about that, uh, and that's something I actually personally learned during the pandemic because you ended up off the treadmill, you know, you weren't doing those things that you were doing normally and you had a lot of time to think. Uh, so for me, I think the biggest learning was uh, moderation and that uh, when you're on the treadmill and you're just like, you know, on flights and shows and this and that, you don't really have time to stop and think. But uh, that pause gave us, I mean, having said that, yes, either people put on a lot of weight during the pandemic but or uh, there were people like me who lost weight because I just said, you know, this is time to like, uh, keep a check on, on things. I, I got the uh, blood glucose monitoring done. I, I started doing a lot of things which I wouldn't do uh, normally. And I feel that uh, definitely I would tend to agree with uh, everyone here that your body actually starts responding differently as soon as you start bothering about what you're eating. 
and uh, I've continued to do so and I think that it's, it's, it's changed my energy levels, I'm waking up differently like Mickey said, uh, it's, it's, it's a new feeling because you're just, it's not about, it's not like dieting, it's just you're looking at what you're eating and, it's, and you're feeling better because of that. Has it brought any change in the design sensibilities that you actually, you know, in the design sensibilities that you actually create for your guests or your clients? And I'm, I, I wouldn't be able to sort of elaborate on that. I'd say that in terms of uh, personally, so your, approach, I think your approach towards uh, uh, the creativity that you have, have you identified that, okay, you know, uh, in, in the last two years, this is what we've seen and the way they predict the color for the season, is there a way that you have figured out the cut and the, and, and the mood that would come so in? You after? Yeah, so more than just what I have figured, I think the whole, it was a worldwide uh, phenomenon where because of uh, the fact that we were all living in our pajamas and track pants and t-shirts for the last two years, uh, there's been this whole thing about casualization in fashion, right? So if there's nothing like, you can't, there's nothing like formal wear anymore. So uh, people have become much more relaxed in what they wear. Uh, overall, in t and then that's become like a global trend. If you were to look at even statistics, there's, there's so many, uh, the sportswear and athleisure brands that have made much more money than anybody else because the people have also adopted that as part of fitness and saying that you know it's not now this is not gym wear this is what we're going to live in this is how our new this is what our new lifestyle is about uh, Vishal I'll come to you is there something that you know that gave you guys also you know time to think and rethink on your business model because you know one the restaurants were shut for two years and then it opened up, people have started flocking back, but a lot of them still want to, you know, address a home delivery or uh, uh, a, a takeaway has kind of taken up. Uh, did you guys remold your business uh, in, in... Yeah, it taught us a lot of things, uh, you know, post-pandemic. During the pandemic, obviously, takeaway was the only option. So, uh, you know, a lot of uh, restaurant owners moved to takeaway business. And uh, so that is one change that has happened in... I think uh, there's always a debate between takeaway and dine-in, you know, which is going to grow. But uh, I feel takeaway business is going to eat out of the portion of home cooking. So people are cooking less, ordering more. That's the difference. And in dining post-pandemic, uh, you know, we've seen, I told you earlier that uh, people are looking at going to far more hygienic places now. That's the biggest change we've seen. Initially, people were avoiding crowded places. You know, uh, but I feel gradually that has changed. Uh, people have started uh, going to filled up restaurants, bars, uh, and that's a hell, you know that's something that we've always looked up to. So I think we've we're gradually leaving the pandemic behind, getting back to what we were in the pre-pandemic era. Uh, the changes that I, uh, you know, we've we've incorporated in the restaurant is that, uh, as I said, that hygiene is off the highest importance for us. Uh, it was earlier as well, it is now as well. Uh, we were, I guess, one of the first uh, restaurants, standalone restaurant where we have shower rooms for our staff. So when they come, you know, when they come to work, they have a shower first and then come to work. They change and then come to work. So the, we, we've tried to do that. And in terms of food, I've already, you know, I said earlier that there's, there are some super foods that have uh, come up post pandemic. And we try to put that in our menu. So certain changes, uh, a little change in food habits. But going back to what I always say, do things moderately. I mean, I would eat a chole badure or, uh, or a kathi roll every week. So that keeps me healthy. Because then I feel healthy mentally. You know, if I'm not able to do that, it won't give me happiness. And it's all about mental happiness eventually. Of course. So uh, we just need to, like we cleanse our body every day, we need to cleanse our mind every day. You know, we uh, usually go back home and clean our faces take a shower but at the end it's most important is first cleanse your mind when you go back home declutter your mind like he said mindlessness is what you need to do great Misha I'll come to you now I mean your sports background and your current profession in nutrition how are you able to mix both of them and suggest your clients that okay this is what you should be doing and this is what uh, your body pattern suggests and you know, but you need enough energy and uh, uh, and, and power and, and, and the nutrition value. Are you able to mix it up and you suggest that, okay, you know, while I know that this is not really right for you, but if you do this, if you do, uh, you know, a, a game of squash, it will balance it up. Are you able to do that or is there a 
pattern that you see your guests are saying that you know I've gone more physically active and I'm doing X Y Z stuff. Do I need uh, a diet pattern, uh, or am I good with just a just a game of squash? Um, so I see both sorts. I see people who are you know they might be overweight and they're not exercising and then i see people who are not overweight and who are exercising like crazy but who are still not okay health wise who are still not okay uh, uh, with their markers with their gut tests or with their functional medicine tests and things like that so uh, exercise obviously is a huge part of being healthy and well is that exercise necessarily defined and laid out that you need to run this much every day or you need to go and do high intensity interval training or do you need to go and play squash that is very person dependent and i think the way that i approach nutrition and i approach wellness is that it's not just what you eat it's not just how much you exercise as vishal said and miki said it's a it's a total body modality right you can eat all the broccoli in the world but if your mind is not in a happy place you're not going to be healthy inside um and as monique mentioned as well you know you sort of have to i feel very strongly that when you approach any kind and this is the difference between being a dietitian who say focuses on weight loss as opposed to being a functional medicine functional nutrition uh, approach that i that i follow and that is that you have to address all aspects from diet to exercise to mental wellness to meditation different people it's it's you know it's like a, a circle that has pies and different people need different parts of that pie in a larger proportion right so somebody might come to me and they might be eating all the right things i'll give you an example i had somebody who came to me who um was vegan who was having lots of almond milk smoothies and lots of kale and lots of vegetables and um you know she was really healthy by the book but she had severe dysbiosis and she had a lot of mental stress and a lot of mental issues which also contributed to the dysbiosis but when we actually tested her and we got going and there's a whole health questionnaire that takes about 45 minutes to fill out and discussions that I have with my clients what we found out was that she's severely allergic to almonds and she was having almond milk twice a day and thinking she was really healthy you know so it's very subjective and each person is bio individual they need to be treated in that bio individual way me for example right i could play 2 hours of squash all through my 20s and 30s and 40s and i thrived on it today i can't exercise at that level i need a quieter you know a yoga practice i need um you know maybe a little bit of strength training so it changes also you know as you go not only what you eat but you know how you exercise how you live how you approach the world it's all very individual and i think that's that's like the most important thing that i could say about health and wellness today is you must do what works for you because what works on instagram with so many people doing so many different things it can be very intimidating it can be very stressful right but if that's not going to work for you if it's going to add stress to your life then you're not going to achieve anything so you have to work with who that person is sitting in front of you what their goals are they need to be very clear also you need to help them find clarity on what their goals are is it exercise is exercise something that makes them passionate that makes them happy that makes them healthy then let's focus on a more exercise centric approach with food as the supporting act whereas for somebody else who comes in and who says you know i really want to lose some weight um but i'm not great with exercise how can we look at food to help them achieve their goals in a way that's not stressful or you know threatening to them so for me it's very much a whole approach dr ravi i'll come to you now has have you seen you know people coming to you asking for more functional way you know you you practice yoga uh, i am i'm one person who being in the wellness industry running a wellness magazine i have never really been able to concentrate my thoughts sitting at one place you know the, oh there's a shoot that's happening oh i don't know if the the pictures were right oh i have to travel all those things keep coming back to my mind uh how does one focus the thoughts 
and uh, uh, does it happen taking sessions or you know I'll come to a yoga guru that please teach me how to meditate he'll do his best but if I'm unable to control my mind how does one control the mind uh, one technique or one helpful advice that you could probably suggest uh, you know a German philosopher Nietzsche once says that we assume that we think but in reality we are thought we can't control our minds. We can't control anything under the sun. And all control freaks are most stressed out people under the sun. That's number one. Uh, number two, watching is important. Witnessing, watching. I'm not saying observation. Observation is very occidental. Witnessing and watching. And while you're witnessing, your awareness levels need to keep rising up. So as you're sitting down, first of all, meditation is never done. Meditation is a state of being and not doing. Everything that you do becomes ugly. A painter is not doing. A sculptor is not doing. A musician is not doing. Okay? Even in sex, when you do, it becomes ugly. But when you are being in the flow, it's beautiful. So being in meditation, not doing anything in meditation, stop doing, start being, is the mantra for meditation. And there are no methods applied. Because the moment you say, first do this, then do this, the meditation goes for a toss. Meditation is openness. Meditation is complete calming, relaxing, and stilling yourself. And in that stillness, the water that is mucky, the muck is settled. Meditation is like the curd karma. Take yogurt, take milk, churn it, leave it for 12 hours, if every hour you were to stir a spoon inside to see whether the yogurt is set, it will never set. Dhaiko jamne do yaar. Let set go. Let it be, let it go. And leave all controls. Yeah, what you... so, sorry. Okay, leave all controls. That is the time meditation happens. Meditation is never done. In being and becoming, meditation happens. Thoughts will come, it's an open sky, clouds will be there. Watch them as they come, watch them as they go. Don't attach yourself to the thoughts that come in and that go. You go to a party and there are hundreds of people, you start engaging with them with your eyes, they'll come to you and get attached and they'll start talking to you. You simply watch them, don't give them attention. The moment you give attention to something, then it gets latched on. So quantum mechanics says that you put attention into the field, you energize it, you put intention to the field, you transform it. Okay, so you don't energize your connections, you watch them all, and in the watching is the passing, and in the passing is the knowing, in the knowing is the seeing. So stop controlling. Coming to the burn part, you burn calories, you burn yourself. An exercise should never be a punishment, it should be a celebration. Make love to yourself. Don't eat like an animal, don't work out like an animal. A workout is never a punishment, it has to be a celebration of sorts. Right, moderation is the key, like, you know, uh, well, all said enough. Okay, yeah, yeah, okay, whatever. <laughs> Panik, I'll come to you. Uh, in the last two years, you know, of the pandemic that we saw, mm -hmm. people actually went across with a lot of anxiety issues, People overate and became obese. People didn't know what to do. There's a lot of insecurity in, in their heads and mind. Uh, do you see a pattern of, of your guests or of your patients coming in or the people you treat? Uh, is there some something in, you know, it's like, is it a, like a pattern that you see coming up? And if at all, how are you treating them? Of course, it is individually to be done. But the pandemic actually gave us all one reason to get worried. How I'm going to handle it. Yeah. So how are you addressing it? Um, so I've been doing the work that I do for the last 12 years and in my honest opinion, I don't think anything's changed. <laughs> so like I said, the pandemic gave us a motivation to take care of our health, of our immune system, our digestive health. People became more aware and I think it's definitely resulted in a change of habits like everybody else here pointed out. But we are and we need to just like before the pandemic during the pandemic and now take charge of our health because it'll help us to live our best lives so what i see with the people that come to me they are typically struggling with a health condition and they can't seem to resolve it 
Um, they've tried conventional medicine, they've tried uh, alternative forms of medicine, but they're still struggling with these symptoms. Um, so again, that hasn't changed before, during, and after the pandemic, it's still the same. So the approach that one needs to take is still the same as well. And like you rightly said, like everybody here has pointed out, it's all very bio-individual. And so what I have done is, you know, not ch change my approach. Um, I've just helped people to understand what it is that they need to do in order to get down to the bottom of what it is that they're dealing with, resolve it at the root cause level, and, you know, as such, um, start being healthier. Great. I hope that answered your question. It does, it does. <laughs> uh, very quickly, we'll take the closing remarks. Uh, we'll start with you, and then the last one, Dr. Matai, will come to you for there. So the closing remarks for this. The closing remarks. Okay. So I think I've already said it. <laughs> Great. Then, then uh, uh, Misha. Let's get personal. I think is my um, my thoughts. Yeah. I think for me, um, besides the bio individual approach, besides personalizing it, I think uh, what what's happened post pandemic is people I find are definitely more in touch with what they want what their goals are, or at least they know what they don't want, right? And uh, I think that's a really important crossroad in health and wellness today, both in the space as well as in the personal space, is to figure out who it is you are and start there. And not try and be that person on the internet who's gluten-free and somebody who's vegan and somebody who's intermittent fasting. So there's lots of tools, right, to get where you want to, physically as well as mentally. But you need to first start by saying, who am I and what can I do now? Rather than, I want to be that space. So for me, that's the most important sort of thing that I'd like to share. Wait, Ashish? Well, yeah. Uh, I think they're all the experts. I'm, I'm more here as a listening to what they're saying. And I think there's a lot of learning that I'm taking back from this panel. And uh, a lot of it is, you know, you hear it, but you don't often practice it enough. I'm going to try and practice a lot of what I've heard today. Great. Then tell me, what's the color of the season coming up? Well, the color of 2023 is what is, is this, um, this particular number to it, but it's called magenta. It's R23 magenta. So it's the color of... 2023, not just color of the season. Very nice. Thank you. Uh, Vishal? Uh, you know, stop thinking about looking good. Start thinking about feeling good. So eat well, go to all the restaurants, and feel good. <laughs> what's, what's, what's the new superfood that you're going to be introducing in your restaurant? Uh, not anything in particular. You know, I would always say that uh, superfoods are always trending. But what has been there for years, uh, so I would say all traditional foods are fantastic. So stick to that. Great. Dr. Mehta, uh, we'll come and we'll be uh, You know, uh, Ashish, you look like Alec Baldwin. And I, you know, he's my favorite actor. So thanks for coming and making my day. So Vishal, you spoke about giving baths to your, all your chefs and cooks to make sure they have a bath. You must give a bath to all the people to come and dine there also. <laughs> Because that's also very important. I think in time to come, restaurants which offer showers will do better. <laughs> uh, coming to superfoods, uh, yeah, that I, when people ask me, what do you eat for breakfast? I say, I have breath for breakfast. I soak myself in the sun and I mingle uh, with elements. Food can be responsible for making your own destiny as one of the very good quotes of Rig Veda says, we are what our deepest desires are. As are our desires, so is our will. As will be our will, so will be our intentions. As will be our intentions, so will be the deeds. And as will be the deeds, so will be our destiny. Choose your food to choose your destiny. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for summing it in, 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 in a very crisp and a very easy way for all of us to end. And I thank all of you, Monique, Misha, Dr. Mehta, Vishal, and Ashish. Uh, You've been a great panel here. I hope uh, I was able to do justice to such a, you know, a diverse, uh, diversified uh, uh, interest of people and the panel here. Uh, a lot of learning that I'm taking back, and I hope you guys are as well. Okay, thank you so thank much. You.